Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Satyajit Patnaik and I'm super excited to talk about Microsoft Fabric. Well, Microsoft is marketing Fabric as a unified data analytics tool, but I must tell you that Fabric can do a lot more than analytics. There are lake houses that you can create. There are data flows where you can integrate. There is there is a custom query language where you can get started with KQL databases. You can integrate SQL databases to Power BI. Multiple things can be done. Doesn't matter which domain you are from, whether you are from finance domain, healthcare domain, Microsoft Fabric can easily be integrated to your ecosystem. And I must also tell you that Microsoft Fabric can help you harness the full potential of your data driving innovation and informed decision making well before jumping into microsoft fabric let me tell you that in case you are a complete beginner into microsoft power bi you must have already seen my channel my channel is filled up packed up with power bi things you can visit all of my playlists related to power bi get started with your power bi learning right now in case you are a complete beginner in case you are aware of power bi then this series of videos on fabric could be like uh, icing on the top of the cake so in this series of videos i'm going to talk about microsoft fabric offerings i'm also going to talk about how these offerings can be integrated with power bi so fabric itself is a huge module of four to five different hours where I have multiple videos around 20 25 videos are there so in case you want me to publish Microsoft fabric videos as soon as possible maybe one video every two days then you need to write those things in the comment section the more number of comments I see I will be encouraged enough to push videos faster if I don't see much of comments, then you still expect all of these videos coming on my channel, but on a weekly basis. So let's get started with Microsoft Fabric. In this video, I'm purely going to introduce you about Microsoft Fabric. What are the different offerings? What are the different components of Microsoft Fabric? And trust me, there is a lot of things that I can teach you in Fabric. So stay tuned and watch out my video till the end. In case you love this video, like, share and subscribe the channel and send this video to as much people as possible. And also Power BI related videos and playlists, all the links will be in the description. Go ahead, watch out those videos and enjoy. See you. Hi, welcome to this module on Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft Fabric was released in May 2023, but came into action around 2024 and to be very honest right now a lot of organizations have started using fabric because of its capabilities and power now let's try to understand what microsoft fabric is in in order to get started with microsoft fabric you can simply search microsoft fabric on google you will be redirected to this page where you will initially get an idea about what microsoft fabric is right power your ai transformation Unify your teams and data to accelerate AI innovation with a complete data platform. Now, this tool has been pushed by Microsoft a lot. And I'll be very honest with you right now. I'm working with four different clients. In the past, also I've worked with a couple of banking and insurance clients. And most of the companies who are going for digital transformation, who are going for pipeline building data architecture building they are all preferring to use microsoft fabric let's try to understand more about it to get started with you can watch this video i'm not going to play this video quickly watch it out later on and let me go to the official documentation of what is microsoft fabric in simple terms it's nothing but an end-to-end -end analytics platform right which unifies data of movement data processing ingestion transformation real-time event routing and report building it supports these capabilities with integrated services like data engineering data factory data science and ai 
real time intelligence data warehouse and databases there are multiple capabilities of fabric we have role specific workloads imagine in your organization there are different teams who are working on different type of data sets so you can quickly get started with fabric fabric as a data source and fabric eventually will be having different connections with different original data sources and from fabric you can create a connection to your power bi or directly to your ai pipeline and you can get started with the implementation part you can always have your role specific workloads which basically means customized solutions for various roles within an organization providing each user with the necessary tools the second capability is one lick one lick is nothing but a concept of uh, you you can imagine the concept of lake house with medallion architecture where you have different components like bronze layer silver layer and gold layer where you can store different types of data structured data unstructured data semi structured data so it's like a unified platform or a unified data lake which simplifies your data management and access copilot which is also microsoft's one of the products in association with openai where copilot support is also available in fabric integration with microsoft 365 that's very basic thing we also have access to azure ai foundry and it's a unified data management system and the major part is unification with the software as a service foundation now we are not going to worry about a lot of things here because fabric itself is as i told you it is for data engineering for data factory data science and many other things we are only going to focus majorly on the power bi part how can we get started with using microsoft fabric in power bi now let's try to move on to our miro board where i will be showing you the traditional flow what happens in traditional flow is you can see on the screen right we have different data sources and different data sources you can use and start working on your power bi right your different data sources could be a sql table it could be excel sheets it could be json objects it could be a mysql database could be a sql database azure data lake house whatever it is right multiple data sources you can connect and start working on power bi now that was the traditional technique traditional way there are multiple demerits or drawbacks in this approach where what if your data source is already live in your company where your databases are live and multiple changes are happening in your data sets there could be a lot of issues that you might encounter and that is one of the reasons why fabric has come as a broker as a broker layer in between your data sources and power bi so this is how your latest architecture looks like with microsoft fabric now why do we have a fabric centric architecture let's try to understand that so why do we have a fabric centric architecture the reasons are very simple right the very first point is going to be data governance sorry let me just uh, do this data governance is a major major thing which has become more simpler by using fabric which basically means what what do you mean by data governance data governance means who is the owner of the data right and there are multiple other things in in data governance uh, it has become more simple which basically means with respect to accesses documentations and self service etc right apart from that we also have a better data quality as you will be building some robust solutions right now imagine your data sources changes every day or every minute or every hour right now how can we cope up these things directly in power bi initially without fabric things were pretty difficult with fabric it's going to be very very easy and how i will be showing you throughout this module apart from that yes 
as i told you fabric is nothing but it's for data engineering and also for data science and ai so data science ai and machine learning tasks are going to be easier when it comes to using fabric because fabric is going to work as a data platform it's like a unified data platform okay now talking about the next thing which is how how are we going to use fabric or how are we going to do these kind of things how are we going to enhance more on the data governance data quality and blah 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 right the very first point i would like to talk about is going to be workspace and access control traditionally when you are using power bi service you have to go to app.powerbi.com right app.powerbi.com let me try to log into this account for this exercise i'm going to use one of my organization account i will also tell you some tips on how you can start using an organization account so traditionally what we were doing is we were basically creating a workspace here and we were getting started with power bi dashboard on power bi desktop and publishing them and once the data data da, da, dashboards and the reports are published you eventually will be able to see everything here right now for an example this is a very old dashboard that we have created and you can see the dashboard is ready here in app.powerbi.com now instead of this you have to go to app.powerfabric.com sorry app.fabric.microsoft.com sorry my bad right if you go here you will be able to access fabric you can see it has taken the same login details and you can see workspaces are also created you can do a lot of things here you can create a workspace you can manage a workspace you can have multiple connections with your databases you can create lake houses you can build your warehouse multiple things can be done right so how workspace and access control which basically means on the workspace level or on the item level or on the object level and etc etc or on the row level whatever access you want it's possible data access which basically means you can do everything in fabric including ingestion mirroring etc then comes ingestion as a different topic because data ingestion is very important now ingestion can happen in multiple things one could be in your data pipelines it could be in your data flows or why by fabric notebooks next comes data architecture and choice of data stores what does that mean you will be able to access lake houses data warehouses and also kql database i will talk about kql database very soon it's it's uh, if you have worked on sql databases kql database is going to be very simple with the help of chat gpt you can also simply write queries it's not that complicated and of course ensuring data quality that means when you are building a robust data analytics system data quality will also be ensured and of course the most important point is connecting to power bi and this is exactly the reason why we are here in this module how fabric is going to help power bi users see in fabric there are many topics starting from data engineering to science to power bi we will not be focusing on those things however i will try to give you ideas on what a lake house is what a data warehouse is shortly but we will restrict the discussions specific to power bi okay so connecting to power bi um, and that includes uh, direct link i will talk about direct link very shortly right now apart from that i think we are good on the basics of microsoft power uh, fabric it's based on an unification with sas foundation there are multiple things slowly slowly we'll be talking about that you can read through this document 
it is really good microsoft documentations are more than enough for you to get started with all of these things right fabric integrates workloads like data engineering factory science blah 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 and you can see these are the advantages of fabric i think in bits and pieces we also talked about them there are various components of microsoft fabric power bi databases data factory industry solutions real time intelligence data engineering many many things we will be focusing on power bi power bi lets you easily connect to your data sources visualize and discover what's important and share that with anyone or everyone you want okay so that's all about very basic concepts about microsoft fabric going forward we will be talking about each topic in a separate video that will make your understanding better and at the end of the module i can assure you that you will be able to understand how to use fabric especially if you are working on power bi